Okay, this is just a short video reviewing finding intersections. Um, we'll look at this algebraically and then confirm our work graphically. This can be useful when finding areas, as you may have already done in Calc 1. And then in Calc 2, this will help with finding volume. So we'll just look at two examples. One will involve uh, linear and quadratics, and the other will involve trigonometry. So our first example has x equals y squared. Um, hopefully you can picture that as a parabola opening to the right. And then the line y equals x, just our um, linear equation with a slope of 1. So to find the intersection graphically, not too hard, but again just getting used to what you could do in general, is we notice that if x is equal to y squared, and if y is equal to x, then it must be true that y squared is equal to y, since both of those equations are the same as x. So if y squared is equal to y, um, we could solve this by setting the equation to 0, and then just factoring. So it looks like a greatest common factor between y squared and y is just y. Factoring that out leaves y minus 1. So our two solutions here would be y equals 0, or y is equal to 1. So this found the y coordinates of the intersection. To find the x coordinates, we can plug that y value back into either equation. Uh, maybe I'll just kind of shoot for this y equals x since it's pretty straightforward. Whatever y is, x is the same. So if y is 0, that means x is 0. There's one intersection, the point 0, 0. And then for the next value, y being 1, again, x would likewise be 1, so there's the second intersection of these two functions. So let's just kind of try it graphically uh, on our coordinate plane. So I'm going to go ahead and put the linear equation on the map first. The line y equals x just goes straight through the origin, slope of 1 there. Uh, the line x equals y squared, that was our parabola opening to the right with vertex at 0, 0. So this is far from perfect, but I think you'll get the idea. And then what we're saying right now is that, um, hopefully visually you agree, they intersect twice, right about here and right about there. And from our algebraic work, I have no guesswork as far as what those points are. Um, this first point on the left is the origin, 0, 0. And the second point here is 1, 1. So, of course, if you have access to a graphing calculator or something, you can find the intersection graphically as well. It's handy to know how to do both. Since that graph doesn't fully do it justice, let's just look at a few screenshots. These are from Desmos. Um, so you can see, again, the two equations. The purple line, same as before, is y equals x. The orange, um, that was x equals y squared. And we said together that there are two places where they intersect, 0, 0, and 1, 1. So if this were in the context of finding area or volume, we're interested, of course, in the finite region, um, the bounded region that you can find with these two functions. So that region would be the space in between the points of intersection. So we could find that area, or we could even rotate that around an axis and find a volume. So just for a little clearer screenshot of that shading, that would again be the finite bounded area between those two functions. We'll just try one more. So this was a polynomial linear kind of example, and then a trig example. So for this one, we have y equaling sine of x and y equaling sine of 2x. So let's just do as we did before, set these two equations uh, equal again. If y is equal to sine of x and y is equal to sine of 2x, that must mean that sine of x equals to sine of 2x. And this particular example I chose is going to be done probably easiest using a quick identity. That won't always be the case, but um, in, this, in this example, when I look at sine of 2x, maybe a double angle identity comes to mind. So sine of 2x is equivalent to 2 sine of x cosine of x, just to start bringing back some of those useful trig identities. 
So I'll go ahead and just subtract sine uh, to the other side, set this to zero, and then use, again like we did in the last example, just some basic factoring. So I'm looking for the value of x that satisfies this equation now. Uh, I notice the greatest common factor of sine of x. What remains is 2 cosine of x minus 1. So it looks like right now we're interested in where does sine of x equal to 0? And where does cosine of x equal really to 1 half? When we set that expression to 0. So a little bit of unit circle knowledge, feel free to bust that out and follow along. Um, sine of x is equal to 0, of course, an infinite number of times if we consider its entire domain. But we'll, we'll take for this example just um, the first bounded region and the first quadrant. So the first time on the unit circle that sine of x would equal 0 would be at 0. Uh, and then it would happen again at pi and 2 pi and, and so forth. But we'll just go ahead and take x equals 0 here. And then cosine of x equals 1 half in quadrant 1. Uh, that would happen at a y, sorry, at an x value of pi over 3, since we're solving cosine of x is equal to 1 half. So just as we did before, if these are the x values in this case, I'll just go ahead and find the corresponding y values. So if x is equal to 0, then y would be sine of 0, which is 0. So there's one point of intersection. Uh, I just plugged it back into the first equation, doesn't matter. If x is pi over 3, let's just run back up again, then y would be sine of pi over 3, and sine at pi over 3 would equal to rad 3 over 2. And in a minute on my screenshot, you'll see the decimal approximation for rad 3 over 2. I'll just keep exact here. Let's just clean that up. So we had x being pi over 3 and y being rad 3 over 2. Okay, so these are the two points of intersection. Just briefly considering the graph, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I'm going to go ahead and start by plotting our sine curve. And sine looks something like this. I'm not going to have to even graph a full period, so I'm just showing a very small portion of the graph. Uh, you guys know what it looks like. And then sine of 2x may be a little harder to graph by hand, but that one's kind of going to be happening a little bit faster. Hmm. All right, not the best graph I've ever done. Sorry about that. But um, we found algebraically that there should be two points of intersection one of them being the origin, and the other being um, pi over 3. Yeah, this graph is really not to scale, but uh, pi over 3, comma, rad 3 over 2. And when I give you a better screenshot in just a second, you'll find that these graphs uh, intersect, again, an infinite number of times if the domain is not restricted. So in a class setting, you could get some more direction, uh, which area or region to focus on. So let's look at a better graph here. This is, again, just a screenshot from Desmos. So you'll see in blue is our y equals sine of 2x function. In red, we're looking at y equals sine of x. Uh, and we see the points of intersection, intersection we found, which were 0, 0 and then pi over 3, rad 3 over 2, so rad 3 over 2 being approximated by 0.866 here. Um, and then if we were to continue finding points of intersection, obviously they, they're going to continue occurring, such as this one right here at pi 0. Um, but for our purposes, we're just focused on one finite region, just because we went ahead and said that, and in a homework question or, or something like that, it'd be more clear. So this region, for us, is what we're interested in. So that would be um, a region we could find the area for. 
uh, we could take that region and rotate it around an axis and find a three-dimensional volume, different things like that. So hopefully that helps refresh you a little bit, and there's some practice to follow up.